The first jawless fish had some elements of the chondrocranium, small pieces of cartilage which could support sensory structures like the ear forming part of an otic capsule or supporting the brain. Later cartilaginous fish, as evidenced in the skull of this shark, evolved a much more elaborate condocranium, which surrounded the olfactory uh, centers forming a nasal capsule, surrounding the eye forming an optic capsule with antorbital and postorbital processes, a foramen for the optic nerve, even a pedestal to support the eyeball, uh, an otic capsule which surrounded uh, the ear, and supports for the brain completely encasing it. Some of these features can be interesting in evolutionary terms. Uh, for example, this eye stalk is a component of the modern shark skull, but not found in any modern bony fish. But the earliest bony fish did possess this feature and others which link them to uh, the more ancestral uh, fish uh, pattern. These cartilaginous components of the skull form the chondrocranium, which was the second of the three portions of the vertebrate skull to evolve the region. Although the skull of the osteichthyans, ranging from teleost fish to mammals such as humans, is primarily made of bone composed from the dermatocranium, the cartilage of the condocranium is significant for two reasons. One, it forms in the embryo and supports embryonic structures and forms a scaffolding for some of the bone which will form later. But secondly, some of this cartilage is converted to bone through endochondral ossification. One of the two forms of bone making is to form cartilage first and then convert that cartilage into bone. And so therefore, portions of the occipital bone begin as cartilage from the condocranium and are later converted to bone. The same is true of portions of the temporal bone and sphenoid bone. And so the condocranium can uh, contribute to bones of uh, the vertebrate skull, whether these be separate elements, and that's more typical in teleost fish, or components of larger bones in mammals.